Okay, so I just want to let uh, you know that there's a small problem with the Creatively um, and Cura and the SD card. So in order to have Creatively read the models that you're producing Cura, uh, you have to actually save with Cura on your local hard disk and then move or copy the file onto the SD card. If you use Cura to save directly onto the SD card, the Creality CR10 S Pro doesn't read the model. It just doesn't see the G code. And that was the only thing that I could figure out in this regard. And that's something for you to take note. Uh, and besides this workaround, which I fixed, I try to find other workarounds for this uh, Creality CR10 S Pro. And I'm trying to review it to the best of my 3D printing abilities and experiences. Right off the bat, I could say that it does print better than the small printer I have here, which I've been trying to return to them, but they haven't responded yet. It prints better than that. However, because since I'm a novice in this uh, 3D printer, and I'm not sure if I am too harsh or not, but I'm not satisfied with the quality of the 3D prints. And I'll uh, explain or try to explain why. I print a bunch of parts, and if I uh, zoom in closely or bring this close to you, okay? I don't like these uh, edges, these, I don't know, jagged edges. They're not smooth from top to down so i tried and i tried this just as experimenting with threads and it doesn't work uh and not only i mean this is just to experiment with threading inside there there's threads and the screws that i was trying to thread in they broke and i'm not sure if that's because of the printer the heating i tried different heat i tried it all the way up to 225 i assume that you know the subsequent layers they will stick to each other better if the heating it's higher I tried lower heating, but you can never have like a smooth finishes without these jagged edges. So I printed a bunch of things. I printed this big vase here. And during the print, I lowered the speed and the temperature. Okay, and you can see here, it's much, uh, the edges are much more rough. And they're much more shiny because I the temperature was 225. And then up here... There's, you can see more smoothness. It is more smooth. The edges don't reflect as much light. But still, you can see like individual layers that kind of, you know, reverberate through the whole print. I would say. I'm not sure. What. I made a video about this failing print because of uh, my computer. I decided to do a bit. So this failed, and I decided to keep it or try to fix it. And the edge seems similar. So uh, there's no way for me. I haven't discovered a way to make this printer, you know, have like a continuous for about $700, they should do a better job. And also, I bought, as you can see, the printer right there. It's not, it's bad. I bought this plate from Creality for this printer as a suggestion. I said, oh, fantastic. And this is not even as thick as the original plate and is not even to the sizes of the bed in which it rests. So I still have to use these things to kind of maintain it, which is annoying. I mean, if you're a manufacturer, you manufacture things for your own product or up upgrades or something, make them to spec. And that's uh, one of the things. Uh, the other things that are annoying. And the most annoying and the most troublesome problem with this printer is the actual print head. Okay? And uh, it's adjusting it to be flush on the rail so it doesn't have any play left and you cannot hear it rattling in there. To adjust that, I spend originally three hours and the second time I spent like an hour. Why? How is this supposed to work? What? No way. This is gonna pull on the head. So what am I supposed to achieve here? Oh man, this needs to be tight. So to adjust this head, there is no logical approach that I could find unless it's just trial and error. And there is no trial and error to discover a way of actually doing it. And I don't know how this works. Like how it was designed. There is an offset nut, like uh, most of the nuts, I would say here and here. And this offset nut has an off-center circle that goes into a hole. You kind of, when you turn that nut around, uh, it basically, the offset moves the wheel, the ball bearing wheel, up against the rail and tightens it. The only problem is the offset is not to a point where you can say that this has no play. So if that nut, has an offset that is not sufficient, then there must be a second portion of this, you know, and a second variable that 
you need to be aware or mindful of to kind of tighten it. Every time I found a sweet spot for this, it was by mere chance and just tinkering with it. And there is no logical approach. The most logical approach I found for me to do is to use the Allen key in the screw in the back and then to use the wrench they provided on the big nut and then to use the other end of the wrench on the small nut so what i found is i have to like lift this up all the way here sit on the chair and then look upwards and then adjust the main nut the big offset nut you know and i can see the wheel go up and down right i can see it going up and down up and down so you do that until you kind of gauge the most of that it's this is the most tight and this will still rattle okay that being said then after that you leave that nut to that setting and what you could try to do is tighten with the allen key and you still hold the middle nut which is the larger nut with the larger uh, side of the wrench or end of the wrench and with the allen you kind of tighten the screw there from the back not on the front of the head like after this casing and on this aluminum plate right there in between you can put the wrench to tighten the opposing nut not the offset nut and this would be the screw so basically screw offset nut and the opposite nut for tightening so you have the main nut offset nut here you hold it with the wrench and then you play with the allen key to kind of tighten the system and maintain that nut to its own position because otherwise if you tighten with the allen key and you don't maintain that nut you're creating you're adding more uh rattling to this or you make it loose so once you get that you try to tighten with the allen key and see, feel on the Allen key that the, 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 the system itself, it tightens. Once it tightens, then you can move the wrench from the offset nut to the opposite nut and play with the Allen key to see if, and, you know, kind of see if this is rattling less or more. And then, or you can actually move only the Allen key by holding the offset nut. If you gain more play or lose more play, and this becomes tighter. And I've been trying that. I was trying to kind of create or figure out a system of how to like have repeatable results without wasting time. I couldn't, unless I have to take this back and actually uh, take it apart and actually understand what's going on there. So the adjustment of this head is the worst nightmare. And uh, this is a second thing where it, to me, it seems like they weren't careful enough to design it better than it is. I'm not sure it's because of my inexperience, but this is it. I'm not happy with that. Now the bed leveling. So the bed leveling, it's another issue that you have a problem with. Uh, first of all, there's this gauge here with um, the uh, screw that you adjust back and forth. So to adjust that and to dial it in, you have to kind of go to the bed leveling, just look at the actual um, nozzle touching the bed. Okay, sometimes if this is too misaligned, this head is going to press very hard on the bed and it might actually loosen it off the rail. So watch out for that. I, my suggestion is before you start using it, tighten this screw a lot more to make it more sensitive. So clockwise is, becomes more sensitive. So therefore it detects the, this, uh, the object or the plate from a further distance. So the nozzle is going to be way up in the air. And then you untighten it counterclockwise, obviously. And that becomes less sensitive and it allows the nozzle to approach the bed more and more and what you do to dial this in you basically tighten the screw do a bed alignment or a leveling then um you know if you're not satisfied do it again and again until this 20.20 20 millimeter gauge kind of has slight drag well anyway this 0.2 gauge fits underneath and it has the slightest of drag and try to Relevel the bed a few more times to get it to like have the same drag and then also try to adjust the knobs or tighten it before basically the whole frame needs to be tightened and everything needs to be tightened before even everything so tighten whatever nuts you have here and bolts i had to tighten these in the back on which these two long screws is the axis screws uh travel so Tighten those. Uh, initially, this wasn't obvious for me because everything seemed tight except the head. Then these here, they have like also offset nuts to like make this not rattle the whole, the entire rail itself, you know. So, and then the other portion of the leveling is with, you put it here and you gauge it underneath the rail here and here. Eventually you have to do this to make sure that this is at the same distance on each side and you can independently turn these hold the other one and then turn this one until you have it dialed in so and then proceed with the bed level and then you can do the measurement from the menu eventually you're going to end up printing 
with this quality, right? Uh, and I printed a few benches. Uh, this is the quality you get. Um, and my concerns are these, like out of out of proportion, like lines here, like there's four lines and in between. So it's not like completely at the same level. They, it seems like the uh, layers are kind of getting out of, thrown off and I'm not sure why it is. And I'm not sure if this is because my inexperience or is because this is how much this device can produce. That being said, I'm not totally satisfied with this printer. I'm not even sure if there's a printer that can give you a like straight face. I've already been tinkering with this on a daily basis to try to get it to a functionality that would satisfy me and will also allow me to kind of talk about it in a fair way. So I I, uh, I think this is my uh, review on the Creality CR10S Pro, okay? And this is all I can say about it. It prints, and for large objects, because it's a fairly large volume, for large objects is good, but quality of the print and the walls is not as nice as I would want it to be, because you could see the difference after I change the speed and the temperature. So initially, I tried to print at 80 millimeters per second. I wanted to print fast. I didn't care about the quality, just to print my parts fast so I can see if I can play with them or if I can use them. But I, I was reading, while well, this was printing for like two days, I was reading online about layer shifting to much speed and like what's the better options for printing. And they showed like 60 millimeters per second was high, which I started this at. And then I reduced it and I could see the results. However, the results didn't improve phenomenally well because there's still like these layers sticking out at odd places it, it's like random there's no way of figuring out it's not as precise as i want it to be and i would like the faces to be straight like not have these layers popping out all over the place at random and that is what i have to say about this uh creality 3d printer creality cr10s pro